So now let's move on to the next topic, which is basically fast. So anybody, can you please tell me what is the full form of this particular fast? What does fast stand for? Can you please help me with this? Okay. So what this particular, this particular fast stands for? Okay. So fast basically stands for your focused assessment sonography for trauma. Okay, so what does this stands for? So first thing which you need to understand is the full form of this. So what does this particular FAST stands for? FAST basically stands for uh, Okay, so this is focused assessment sonography for trauma okay what is fast stands for this is a focused assessment sonography for trauma so what happens is that first of all let's try to understand why this is needed why this is that so whatever you do in your life you always need to have some kind of a name so what is an aim of performing this particular fast the aim of this performing this particular fast is to look for to look for intra peritoneal fluid are you understand my point so what is the aim of this the aim of this is to look for intraperitoneal fluid so what do you understand by this particular intraperitoneal fluid intraperitoneal fluid basically means that uh, let's assume that okay so you and i we all have like some amount of the intraperitoneal fluid but let's assume that after a trauma okay so let's say there is a patient who has suffered from a trauma okay and after the trauma if you examine this particular patient and there is an increased intra peritoneal fluid okay in these particular patients what does it tell you this basically tells you that there is some significant significant intra abdominal injury intra abdominal injury are you understand my point so if at all there is a patient after the trauma if at all you perform a fast and on the fast there is a significant intraperitoneal fluid is present in that particular patient it basically tells you that there is some significant intra-abdominal injury is present in that particular patient okay so why are we performing the fast because we want to know whether some significant intra-abdominal injury has kind of taken place there or not okay i hope you have understood this point okay now uh when we when talk about the fast, okay, when we talk about the fast, how do you do that? Okay, so how is this particular fast performed? So this is nothing. This is basically a USG, which is basically done in emergency room. In emergency room. And this is basically completed, completed in three to four minutes okay in three to four minutes you complete this particular whatever the test and that is what is basically done in the emergency room this is what you need to understand this is this is how the basically fast is performed and how do you kind of perform it i'll tell you so what you need to understand is that let's assume that this is the abdomen right this is the coaster margin this is the abdomen then what we have is this is what is the pelvis and everything right so what you need to understand is that you keep your ultrasound probe at four positions so this is what is in epigastric then what we have is right hypochondriac region then we have the left oh sorry uh, right subcostal or hypochondriac whatever you want to call it right subcostal or hypochondriac region left uh, kind of hypochondriac region and then at the pelvis okay so keep your probe at these particular four positions okay so when you keep your probe at the epigastric region what are you looking for so when you keep your pro probe in the epigastric region you are basically looking for pericardial tamponade okay so you are trying to rule out pericardial tamponade when you are basically keeping your probe at the right hypochondriac region you're basically trying to look for any particular fluid around this liver when you're keeping it in the left hypochondriac region you're basically looking for any fluid 
around the spleen then when you are keeping it in the pelvic region you are basically looking for any fluid in the pelvis okay obviously right so this is how you kind of keep the probe at the four positions and this is how you basically perform the fast now uh, this is separate from uh, the other kind of ultrasound okay so let's assume that i want to get an abdominal ultrasound done so in that the radiologist is basically going to report everything it is going to the he or she is going to report whether the gallbladder stone is present or not or whether the gallbladder is thickened or not and all these particular things is going to be reported but over here what you need to understand no doubt that it is an ultrasound which is being done but the aim of the ultrasound is just to detect the intraperitoneal fluid all we are trying to see is the intraperitoneal fluid for which we quickly keep the probe at the four positions and we look for the fluid now the question is how much amount of the fluid can be detected by this particular fast okay so can you please tell me how much fluid how much fluid can be detected detected with the fast okay so the answer to this is how much amount of the uh, fluid uh, is kind of detected in this particular fast how much amount of the fluid can be detected so what you need to understand is yes so it is around 100 to 150 cc so by and large it is considered to be 150 but 11 really mentions it as like 100 cc so yeah around 100 to 150 cc this is the minimum amount of the fluid which can be detected by this particular fast now what is the drawback or the problem of this particular fast we were not getting information about the right and the left lung feed and that is why we came up with something which is called as an e-fast okay so what is this particular e fast in the e fast what you're basically doing is instead of keeping the probe at the four positions over here you keep the probe at six positions so here the probe is kept at six positions okay you understand my point so probe is basically kept at the six positions so what are these particular six positions the four we have already talked about the two additionals is the right and the left lung feet okay so over here what you need to understand in the e first you keep the probe so probe is kept at six positions which basically include the right and the left lung fields as well okay so i hope you have understood this point and based on this what do you have you have something which is called as a seashore sign seashore sign and then what we have is a barcode or what you refer to as your stratosphere sign okay so what is this particular seashore sign can you please help me with this particular seashore sign so seashore sign is something which is basically present in normal individuals okay in the normal individuals so for example let's say you and me okay in the you and me if at all let's say we are uh, kind of keeping the probe what is going to happen the lungs is going to expand and it is going to come and hit to the hit the whatever the rib cage and then that particular lung is going to go back i understand my point so this is what is basically referred to as a seashore sign like in the seashore what happens the waves come they hit the seashore and then they basically go back so this is what is present in the normal individuals now what is this barcode or the stratosphere sign so this particular barcode or the stratosphere sign this is basically present in the patients who are having the pneumothorax so what you need to understand is that air is basically going to create a lot of artifacts okay so air basically creates a lot of artifacts and because of these particular artifacts what happens is uh, they basically appear like a barcode or whatever the stratosphere or something so barcode or the stratosphere sign is basically what you basically see in the pneumothorax patients okay so as you can see over here that yeah so this is what you need to understand the normal lung here what you basically get is a seashore sign in the pneumothorax what you basically get is a barcode or a stratosphere sign okay i hope you've understood this particular points in a decent manner okay understood